Today's lecture is regarding the discussion on the memory. Okay. Now, memory is one important component in microprocessors. In all the processors and especially in microprocessors. So memory is used to store both the instructions and data. So whatever instructions we want our processor to execute, those instructions and the data on which those instructions are to be executed, both the instructions and data, they are stored in the memory. And in today's lecture, we will be discussing about the primary memory. Primary memory means the memory that is used to store the instructions which are currently executed by the by the processor for example if we want to run any program that program is first stored in the in our secondary memory from the secondary memory we will get that program and bring that pro program into our main memory so our primary memory is the main memory which is also called a main memory that stores the programs which are currently in execution Okay, so our lecture will be regarding these primary memories. So we won't be discussing about the secondary memory. Secondary memories, for example, hard disk, floppy disk or uh, flash drive. Those are the secondary memories and we won't be discussing about the secondary memories. Our discussion will be primarily focused on the primary memory or main memory. That includes one is a read write memory that we also called a RAM. And another is a uh, is a read only memory that is called a ROM. So we will be discussing about the RAM and ROM. So this this discussion will briefly discuss about the memories that are present in our microprocessor. However, for greater discussion, I have given a link in the description section here, so you can follow that link to have a greater. Uh, greater detailed discussion about the different kinds of memories that are present in the processes. Okay, so our read write memory, let's discuss about the read write memory. This read write memory is made of, if we say, registers, a simple memory. It is not always registers, it may be, for, for example, it may be made of. Uh, different kinds of other memories for example we have DRAMs, DRAM cells, we have SRAM cells as I have said that for greater discussion you can follow the link given in the description but here let's for the sake of simplicity and for understanding let's say that the memory is made of registers okay so let's say each register is of 16 bits Okay, let's say it is of 16 bits. That means it can store 16 bits at a time. Or we can say let's have a registers and each reg register is storing a 8 bit quantity. Okay, so this is register 1. And let's say we have a memory, memory of 8 bytes. Okay. So if it is a memory of 8 bytes, then how many registers are there in this particular memory? There are 8 registers. So we can say this memory is made of 8 registers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So these are the 8 registers. R1, R2. And every register has an address. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So since there are how many, how many locations, how many bytes, there are eight bytes and we know that each byte has an address. So how many bits will be required to address these eight bytes? So it will be log of eight to the base two. So it will be three. So three bits will be used to address this kind of memory. So for example, zero, zero, zero will be the first byte, zero byte. 0, 0, 001 the first byte 0, 010 0, the second byte similarly the last will be 111 so please keep this in mind that if we have n bits 
then we can clearly have two raise power n addresses okay if we have x addresses here we will be we are having how many addresses eight addresses so these x addresses can be denoted using log of x bits so you have to keep this this thing in mind so here we are having how many addresses eight addresses so how many bits can be used so we can use three bits to address these eight addresses likewise if we have 16 addresses or 16 locations then how many bits will be required log of 16 log of 16 will be log of 2 raised power 4 that will be 4 so 4 bits will be required to denote how many locations 16 locations or 16 addresses so why I am discussing about the addresses and different uh, different number of bits that is required it is because for accessing any memory we require the address of the register from which we have to get the data so register here means the location one byte location of a memory and after identifying that location or after identified that identifying that particular register we have to read or write from that register or in that register okay so address is very important in case of a memory so as i said that let's say we have a memory this is our memory and we want to read or write something from this memory so first of all we send an address through an address bus okay so using that address for example here goes our address so here wh what was the address three bit address okay and at the memory we will be having a decoder so what is a decoder decoder has some input bits and based on these input bits it activates one of the output it has many outputs how many outputs are here if decoder is getting three bits what is the output of what are the possible outputs of a decoder so decoder gives two raise power three that will be eight outputs and from these eight outputs only one will be active so if there are eight outputs so it will activate one output based on these three bits so we will be having a decoder decoder deactivate activates one of the output and this will be our memory one two three four five six seven and eight so we will be having eight uh, registers eight outputs and each output will be connected to, to one register from the decoder okay so this decoder is receiving three bits and from these three bits it activates one of these outputs so let's say three bits were zero zero one that means the first register it will activate this this uh, particular register or this output so we we will be having the data from this particular register so we can either read if we are reading we will get the data from this register or if we are writing we will put some new data into this register and this data that is to be written or to be read from the memory that data is passed through another bus which is called a data bus okay so let me repeat this again so what i am saying here that let's say we have a memory of eight locations or eight registers this is our memory of eight locations this is location 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 and we know that having eight at eight locations we will require log of eight that will be equal to three 
we will require three bits to address these eight locations. So from the processor, we are getting a three bit address. Three bit address. And this address is sent through, an, through a bus which we called a address bus. Okay. So this address, first of all, from, from these three bits, we have to identify one of these eight locations. And that identification is done with the help of a decoder. So we will be having a memory decoder here. This memory decoder takes three bits as input. And from these three bits, it has how many outputs? It has eight outputs here. These are the eight outputs from the decoder. So from these three bits, it will activate one of the output. So each output is connected to a register. Okay, so it gets the three bits and from these three bits, based on three bits, it activates one of the output. Let's say it has activated this output, location two output. So it will activate this register. Let's say microprocessor wants to read data. Read data from which location? From this location too. So after activating, we will have another control signal from the memory. Control signal from memory, uh, sorry, from microprocessor to the register. So it will, this control signal will say whether we want to read data or write data. Let's say we want to read data. So it will send a control signal for read. So from, by getting the control signal, we will get the data from this register. And this data is passed through another bus, which we called a data bus. And this data then goes from this memory to the microprocessor. Now let's say microprocessor wants to write data. Then microprocessor first sends these three bits. Okay. And after that, it sends a control signal, right? And also sends a data on a data bus. So these three bits will activate one of the register. Let's say it has activated this particular register, register four and memory is getting a right signal, a right control signal. That means it has to write data in this location and it will get the data from the data bus and will write in this particular location. Okay, fine up to this point. So basically what is happening here? So uh, what is the actual scenario that is happening? Let's say, let's take two, uh, let, let's take the example of a single register. We will have a, let's say we have a single register or we can say a single memory location, only one memory location. Okay. Let's say microprocessor wants to write data in this register. So in a stead of directly writing into the register, we will have some buffers here, some temporary location. So this microprocessor will first write in this write buffer. Okay. And after writing the write buffer from this write buffer, we will write into the register. Okay. Likewise, if microprocessor has to read data, in a state of directly reading from the register, we will first read the data from this register into a read buffer. And then from this read buffer, we will send data to microprocessor. Now somebody will say, why are we having these extra locations in a state of directly writing into the register or reading from the register? The reason is that even if our memory is busy in handling some other request, we will be able to write our data temporarily in write buffer. So we don't have to wait for the memory to first complete it as ongoing operation. 
ओके सो दीज राइड बफर्स एंड रीड बफर्स गिव सम काइंड ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी टू द मेमोरी एक्सेसेस okay so here i i was saying that we we are having a single register so even if we have let's say four register memory or four location memory so this memory also will be having a write buffer and a read buffer so let's say microprocessor wants to read data from this location 2 okay so what it will do it will activate this location it will read the data from this location into this read buffer and from this read buffer we will send the data on data bus okay so basically the memory is giving data in this read buffer okay and from this read buffer we are taking the output on to the data bus likewise if it has to write data microprocessor has to write data into this memory so in a stead of writing directly into this particular location it will write data in this write buffer so this write buffer takes the input data and this input data is taken from data bus and from here it writes to the memory so input to the memory data input to the memory is taken through a write buffer and output is read from the output buffer or we can say the read buffer so this is also called a write buffer is also called a input buffer and read buffer is also called a output buffer so if we take our memory if we take our register memory so the actual location is like this let's say we will be having an 8 byte memory so 8 byte memory what is the meaning that we will be having eight locations total locations and each location will be storing eight bits that means each location is an 8 bit register okay so this will be our memory eight location memory one this will be our 8 byte memory eight location this location 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and apart from that we will be having an output buffer that means if we are reading something from this memory we are first reading that data into this buffer so how many bits we are reading 8 bits can be read and from this output buffer we take the output on to the data bus likewise if we have to write something into this memory so we will be having an input buffer for that particular purpose okay so we will first write data into this input buffer and from this input buffer we will write the data into the memory and this input buffer takes data from the uh, from our uh, what i mean to say from the data bus fine so and also we will be having a decoder 8 bit decoder this decoder has eight outputs this is basically a 3 bit decoder so since we require 8 bits here or 8 outputs here so it is a 3 bit decoder it is taking 3 bits as input and these 3 bits are the address bits and we get the address bits through 
using an address line or address bus. So this decoder is getting three bits. Okay, from these three bits, it chooses one of the output or it activates one of the output and this register is then for example if register third is chosen then this register will be used to read or write data apart from that this memory also gets a control signal control signal that is given to the memory is either memory read or memory write so if we are reading from the memory that means we have to get something from the memory getting something from the memory is that after activating this location we will get this data into this output buffer from the output buffer onto the data bus and if we have to write something into the memory then we will first write that data from data bus into the input buffer and from input buffer into one of the register based on these three address bits okay so this was all about the accesses into the memory now our aim or our job is to see the structure of structure of each register so how these registers store the bits now the each location or the structure of each location it varies from one memory to another memory. What I mean to say, for example, in case of SRAM memories, okay, in case of SRAM memories, the structure is different as compared to the DRAM memories. So in case of SRAM memories, each cell is made of eight cross coupled transistors or eight cross coupled inverters each cell or sorry each register is made of eight cross coupled inverters and each in DRAM memories each register or each location is made of eight transistors and capacitors So I'm repeating again that for greater discussion on the uh, on the structure of SRAM memories and DRAM memories, please follow the lecture given in the description. In this particular lecture, for discussing the structure of this one memory location, we will be saying that this location is made of eight flip-flops. So each location, each register is made of eight flip-flops that means each location can store how many bits eight bits because we know that one flip-flop can be used to store how many bits one bits so eight flip-flops can be used to store how many bits eight bits so each location is made of eight flip-flops so before discussing the structure of flip-flops i have a small question to discuss here so in our microprocessor 8085 okay microprocessor 8085 we have 16 address lines okay we are having 16 address lines so that means our decoder in that particular memory in that particular processor our decoder gets a 16 bit address and using these 16 bit addresses it chooses one output and what are the possible outputs the possible outputs are 2 raised to power 16 and we know that our memory in decoder is an 8 bit memory or a byte addressable memory that means each location in that memory stores 8 bits or we can say each location is made of eight flip flops. So let's discuss about the flip flops. 
so we don't have to go in greater detail regarding the flip flops because you may have covered the flip flops in your digital design course or digital logic course okay here we have to discuss what kind of flip flops are used to store the bits for microprocessor 8085 we are saying that the registers or each memory location is made of eight flip flops and each flip flop is a d flip flop so what is a d flip flop so d flip flop is like this it has an input d which we say and an output q this is our output Okay. And uh, basically, we have another input and another output which we call the Q bar, but actually, output is this one. This one we take the output. So, if we have to store one, we will give one, and one is stored. If we have to store zero, we will give input as zero, and zero will be stored in this particular flip flop. Apart from the input and output, we also have another signal which is called an enable signal. When enable signal is active, then only we can read or write data into this D flip flop. Writing data means storing some bit into the flip flop, and reading data means getting the data from the output. So also there is one enhancement that is done in D flip flops is that instead of directly connecting the input and output, we connect these two lines using a tri-state buffer. So this is our input D and this is our output So what is this tri-state buffer? So why why do we require the tri-state buffer? So tri-state buffers are used to say that when we want to store the data into this D flow, it should not be that, for example, I am having one here. Okay, one is here and one will be stored. Now in between some fluctuation has occurred and it had become zero. And I don't want to change the change the bit that has been already stored in the memory we want to keep the bit as it is one so the storage in this particular flip flop should be changed only on some signal so when we send some control signal to the flip flop for example write signal or read signal then only this flip flop or this particular flip flop d flip flop should allow the reading or writing into the d flip flop okay so these buffers here these tri state buffers these will be used to control the storage of bits into these flip flops based on some control signals so let's say if i have to store zero in this particular d flip flop so I won't store the zero as it is. So first I will get the data and I will wait for control signal. Because I should get a control signal from a microprocessor that you have to store this data into this flip flop. So the previous design, what it was doing that whenever it was getting zero or one, it was storing that into the memory. However, this new design says that when this dry state buffer receives a control signal, then only it will allow this data to travel from this buffer to this input, to this D flip flop. Likewise, from the output, let's say we have stored one. Okay, this one is stored in this buffer, in this dry state buffer. So instead of directly giving this buffer as output on this output line, 
okay this will be an output line what we are doing that give the output from this particular cell to the output for example to the output will be our data bus or we can say output will be our output buffer so in a state of taking bit from here and directly placing that bit into the output buffer we will say that give the bit from this buffer into the output buffer only when it receives the read signal read control signal from the microprocessor okay and as i said another control signal that it gets is the enable that when we have to enable this cell or when we have to disable this cell so basically this enable and disable will be like selecting a particular location into the memory so in memory we will be having different locations and from these locations we are selecting one location and then from this location we are either reading the data or writing the data so enabling a particular location that will be done with the help of enable line and then deciding from this from that location whether we have to write the data or we have to read the data whatever data is stored there that is done with the help of these two control signals so let me repeat it again what is the structure of a single d flip flop so single d flip flop will be like this so it will get then output from a buffer sorry input from this tri state buffer and output will be received through this tri state buffer and it will get another signal which we called enable signal and these buffers will get two signals one is the uh, uh, write signal and another is read signal so why i am placing a single cir circle here circle means complement so write and read signals are active low active low signals active low signals means when this signal is zero that means we have to read the data and when this signal is one we don't have to read the data and why we are using complement here that since when this signal is zero this should make it one one means activate this cell so this is used for complementing this particular signal okay that is why we are placing a sing small circle here in front of this line okay so these write and read signals go to these buffers which are attached to the input and output of a flip flop and this enable signal is used to activate the particular cell from which we want to read and write data and why there is a need of these particular buffers the need of these particular buffers is to control the flow of data from this cell to this output likewise controlling so basically we will be having an input buffer and from this input buffer we are taking the data and storing into the memory like i have already discussed here in the memory we are having an input buffer and an output buffer so these locations basically these locations are flip flops so they are getting the data from the input buffer so input buffer is giving data to a d flip flop in a state of directly taking the data from d flip from the input buffer and storing into the d flip flop we are giving a write signal when this write signal is low zero then only we will say that we have to store data that is there into the input buffer into my memory likewise we are getting the data from this d flip flop it is not a single d flip flop because it is an but it is an array of flip flops how many flip flops eight flip flops in a location and from these flip flops we are getting the data into the output buffer in a state of directly sending the data from this d flip flop into the output buffer we will send data only when this signal is activated okay so this is a single cell flip flop however let's say we want to have a four bit memory so if we have a four bit memory then then what we have to do 
then we will require that each location should have 4 D flip-flops. So we will be having 4 D flip-flops. 1, 2, 3 and 4. And these 4 flip-flops will be connected to, they will be having an enable signal which enables these four flip-flops or we can say which activates these four flip-flops. So they will be connected to each other. That means if I have to read data from this location, this location means these four bit flip-flops or this will be a complete register. So one register. So one register with four bit storage. Okay. So these enable lines will be connected to each other. And also these, uh, sorry, input buffers. These input buffers will be connected to an input buffer. So input buffer will be of how many bits let's say this is our input buffer it will be of four bits okay let's say it is connected to bit zero this or bit third this is connected to bit two this is connected to bit one and this is connected to bit zero and the control lines of these four input buffers So here we have a small circle here. So these input si input signals will be connected to each other to a read signal. Oh, sorry, to a write signal. Likewise, we will be having four outputs from four these four flip flops. Okay. And these four output outputs will be connected to four bits of output buffer. So this is output buffer is bit 3, this is bit 2, this is bit 1 and this is bit 0. And their control signal, write control signal for, uh, sorry, for reading read control signal will be connected to a a read signal that gets from the microprocessor okay so if you can see how many lines are input to each register so one is this control signal right control signal that goes to all the four flip-flops another is a read signal that also goes to four flip-flops and another signal that goes is the enable signal and from this register gets either a 4 bit input 4 bit input if it has to write data into these or store the data into these four flip flops or it can give us these 4 bits as output so either we are giving some input to a, to a register to these four flip flops or we are getting some output from the flip flop e, sorry from these four, four flip flops or we can say from these four registers so if we make a simple diagram here, let's say this is a register. If it is a 4-bit register, 4-bit register will be means that how many bit uh, flip-flops are there? 4 flip-flops. So we can get either 4-bit output, B3, B2, B1, B0. Output will be? When we, when we are getting from output from the register, when we are sending a read signal. Or it will be taking a 4-bit input for storing the data. B3, B2, B1A, B0. And when will it store the data? When it receives a write signal. And also the register is enabled when this enable signal is 
activated. This enable signal goes to all the four flip flops. And these four bits are taken from the input buffer. And these four bits, if we have to read data, are given to an output buffer. So we can say if we have an eight location memory. So how many locations? One, two, three, four, and eight. This is our eight location memory. So that means this will be uh, how many registers? Eight registers. So each register we know it has one enable signal. So each register will be having an enable signal. As input. Okay. Apart from that, every register is taking two inputs. These two control signals, write and read. So let's say every register has two other inputs. That is write signal and read signal. So these enable signals, these enabling connections are connected to a decoder. Okay, these enable. And we know decoder gets an address from the microprocessor and based on the address, it activates one enabling signal. Let's say this signal has been activated. If this signal has been activated, that means only this register or only the flip flops in this register are activated. The other flip flops, the other registers are in not active mode. So neither we can read data from those registers nor we can write data. And also this register will get either a read signal or an write signal. Other registers will also get this signal. But since enable signal is active only for this register, so only this particular register will take action for these control signals. Others will be in inactive mode. So either we will read from this register or we will write on into this register based on the read and write control signals. So that means this particular signal, this particular memory is taking three bits address and is giving eight bit data. So if we are saying that each register storage has eight, eight flip flops. So we can store or we can read data in chunks of eight bits. So up to this point, we were discussing about the memory, okay, how they are made and how the addresses are decoded to activate one particular register. Let's say in a state of eight location memory, we have 16 location memory. So how many bits will be required? Address bits, we will require four address bits. So let's name them A3, A2, A1 and A0. And how many locations will, will be there? 16 locations or 16 registers. So we will require a decoder which is 4 cross 16. That means it is getting 4 bit as an input and it is activating one output from 16 outputs. Okay. So in a state of having a single memory, single memory, single memory with how many locations? 16 locations. Why can't we have two memories or two separate memory chips and each chip is of eight locations? So let's say this is chip one or we can say chip zero and this is chip one. And we know that chip zero and chip one, let's say this is of eight locations and this is of eight locations. So total memory is how much is our memory? The total memory will be 16 locations. And in, in the first case where we were having a 16 location memory, we were requiring how many bits? 
four address bits here if you see how many bits are required so for this particular chip chip zero there are eight locations so we will require three bits and for this memory also we will require how many bits three bits for addressing and the other bit let's say this is bit a2 a1 and a0 this is a2 a1 and a0 let's say we have an address this is a four bit address 1000 okay if we were having a 16 location memory then this address would have been what will would have been this address 1000 this will be address number number Eight. Now, if we are having this type of memory, two bit, uh, two chip memory. So, what is this address? So, basically, from this address, we are choosing only three bits. So, these first three bits, zero, zero, zero. Address is zero, zero, zero. That is address number zero. So, using these three bits, how many addresses can be generated? Eight addresses. and in both of these chips this chip 0 and chip 1 how many locations we need to uh, we need to address we need to address total eight locations so using these three least significant bits we can address all the registers in chip 0 and all the registers in chip 1 now let's say we have this type of address address number 0 now address 0 is available in chip 0 also and chip 1 also now from which chip we have to select this address 0 whether from chip 0 or from chip 1 that is differentiated with this last bit that remains and this last bit this one bit this one bit is used to choose from these two chips so we have another address bit that remains and that address bit was a3 that address bit is used to choose the two choose from these two chips let's say if address is 0 a3 is 0 then we have to choose chip 0 and if if this address is 1 then we have to choose chip 1 okay so this signal will go as input to both these chips so in a stead of directly sending this we will send the not of this not of this as input to chip 0 so if a3 is 0 a3 is 0 now what goes as input to chip 1 to chip 1 we will be having 0 0 means disable this chip okay 1 means so here this inverter will convert sorry this 0 to 1 so that means enable this so this chip will be enabled chip 0 now if a3 is 1 so what will be an input to chip 0 a1 1 will be converted to 0 by this not gate so chip 0 gets 0 0 means deactivate this chip and a3 goes as input to chip 1 a3 goes directly as 1 we have a3 as 1 that means activate this chip so we will activate this particular chip now if the address is let's say 1001 so from the most significant bit this bit this will be our chip select bit so here how many bits are used for chip select one bit so that means how many bits how many chips can be there there can be 2 raise power 1 chips that means two chips because using one bit you can differentiate between two chips only zero means one bit and one being means second second chip zero means one chip and one minus second chip okay and then these three bits will be used to address register in that chip in that chip okay now if we are having this particular address 1001 so first we will choose the chip okay so using one which chip will be selected 
chip 1 will be selected now goes the address 0, 0, 001 these three bits go as address to chip 0 also to chip 1 also but since only chip 1 is activated so only this chip 1 will take action on these three three uh, address lines 0, 0, 001 so it will choose one of the register and from this register we will get the output And also both these chips are getting the control signals, read control signal and the write control signal, both chips. So if you see that our address, this particular address is divided into two parts, one part, part one and part two. Part one is required for chip selection. And part 2 will be required for the register in selected chip. Okay. Let's say we have a memory. We have a memory with, uh, let's say, 5 addresses, 5 address bits and with four chips and each chip has eight registers okay is it possible to design this particular memory using five address bits let's see if is it is possible so using five address bits how many locations can you differentiate two raised power five that is 30 so let's see if there are 32 locations. Now every chip has how many locations? 8 locations. And how many chips are there? 4. So total is 8 into 4 that will be 32. So yes using 5 bits we can design this particular design of memory. Now if somebody says I have 5 address bits. And I want to have a memory with 4 chips. And each chip has 16 registers. So it is, is it possible to design such a design, such a memory? No, it is not possible because having 16 registers with four chips, that will be 64 locations and you cannot address 64 locations using five address bits. You need minimum six bits for that. Now somebody will say, I have 10 bit address, 10 bit address and I want to design a memory system with four chips and 16 registers now four chips with 16 registers will be 64 locations and 10 bit can address how many locations 2 raised power 10 that is 1024 locations so since we require lesser number of locations so this design can be easily created using 10 bit addresses so how will we will we design this kind of uh, memory system with these address bits? We will explain this uh, in few minutes. Okay, let's first see this design. Five address bits, four chips, and each chip has eight registers. Let's take each chip first. So how many address bits are there? We have. Four at ad five address bits that will be a4, a3, a2, a1, and a0. Now, as I said, that first of all, you have to check if it is possible to design this particular system. Since we checked that yes, it is possible to design this particular system, then comes the uh, then comes the problem of designing the chip, uh, designing the memory system. So we are designing the memory system. Okay, so we are having five address bits here. And each chip we know that we require eight locations. Eight locations means that each chip will get three bit address. So each chip will be getting A0, A1, A2 as the address. And how many bits remaining? These two bits. These two bits are then required to implement chip selection logic. Chip selection logic 
okay so we know that how many chips we require four chips and using two bits we can generate four and two uh, yes four addresses zero 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 one one zero one one so zero zero let's say it is chip zero zero one let's say it is chip one one zero let's say it is chip two and one one let's say it is chip three okay now we have four chips chip zero chip one chip two and and these four signals will be getting an input signal which enables this is a chip selection signal okay they will be getting a chip select signal now we have to see how we can design this chip select signal okay that means we are saying the input that goes to chip 0 it should be 1 when the two bits are 0 0 and it should be 1 for chip 1 when the two bits are 0 0 and it should be 0 for all the others at that particular time so if we have to select chip 3 so what should go input to the chip 3 it should be one one means this is enable and all the others should get zero so disable these chips only select chip three and this chip three will get one when the chip select signals are one one okay let's design a circuit so we are saying that so basically all these three chips so we are having these four chips one two three four and these four chips are getting two input bits a4 and a3 so as i said if a4 and a3 are zero zero this is a4 a3 if it is zero zero chip 0 should be selected if it is 0 1 chip 1 if it is 1 0 chip 2 if it is 1 1 chip 3 so let's take these two as here let's design an AND gate so this is an AND gate And the input is complement of these two. So circle mean is complement. And this will go as input to chip 0. This is chip 1, chip 2, chip 3. So that means if both these are 0, 0. 0, 0 means this will become 1. Because complement is here, this is also 1. So 1, 1 goes as input to the AND gate. And it will be 1. Now for other scenarios, for example, if A4, A3, they are 1, 0 or 0, 1 or 1, 1, the output of this, this particular uh, design will be 0. Now if these A4 and A3, if they are 0, 1, then chip 1 should be selected. So let's take the complement here and AND gate. So this will be the chip logic for chip 1 so likewise if it is 1 0 so if it is 1 0 then chip 2 should be selected so the output of this AND gate will go to chip 2 and if it is chip 3 then both should be 1 1 a3 and a2 should be 1 1 So our address A4, A3, A2, A1, A0, this 5-bit address, this will be generated by our microprocessor. So these two bits will go to the chip selection logic, okay? And these three bits will go as input to all the chips. So first, 
we have to select one of the chip let's say chip one is selected then using three these three bits we select one location inside this chip now your homework is to design design a memory system with uh, let's say three chips or we can say let's say we have four chips and address and each chip has eight locations okay and address is seven bits okay so design a scheme with this particular address bits and this should be our memory design okay so i will give a hint here so each locate each chip has eight locations so from these seven bits we use three bits for selecting a register in a chip and the remaining four bits higher order four bits so these four bits will be used to design a chip selection logic so we know that using four bits how many chips chips can be addressed to raise power four that will be 16 however we have only how many chips we have only four chips okay so using four bits you have to choose a chip selection logic for four chips okay so that this is your homework please try this particular design and take the book take the help from the book that is microprocessor architecture programming and application that is written by ramesh gonkar you can take help from this particular book this was all about the memory design and what are the different kinds of memories or how memories are designed what are the different input and output signals and as i said that if we have a 16 bit address then from this 16 bit address we can easily locate 2 raised power 16 locations and that will be the size of our memory as well 2 raised power 16 locations and if each location has one byte of memory that means that particular memory is 2 raised to power 16 bytes this completes our lecture on the memory design for microprocessors and as I have repeated in this lecture that for the greater discussion related to the different kinds of memories and different kinds of uh, logic elements that are required in the in designing of memories for example decoder multiplexer and many other components logic components that are required please follow the link that is given in the description and you can you can see those videos and from those videos you can you can understand the greater discussion about the SRAM memories, DRAM memories, ROMs, programmable ROMs and many other different logic components that are required in the design of memory. Thank you everyone. We will meet in the next lecture.